All right, so in this lesson, we're going to learn all about the HTML void elements, such as the horizontal rule and the break element. What exactly are void elements? Well, we've seen what non-void elements are, such as the paragraph element or the heading elements, and they're not void because they have content right here in between. A void element is an element where you are forbidden from putting any content inside the tag. And in fact, the tag itself even looks very different. So this is a horizontal rule element, and you can see that it starts out with an angle bracket, ends with an angle bracket, but then right here, there is this forward slash just before the end of the tag. You might think this looks a bit like the closing tag of a normal HTML element, but it's actually subtly different because here in the closing tag, that forward slash is just after the opening angle bracket. It's right here in front of the letter. Whereas in the void elements, the forward slash is actually just before the end of the tag. And normally by convention, you'll see a little space here as well between the tag name and also that forward slash. This is just something to be really careful about when you're creating these void elements. Make sure that you've got the forward slash slashing in the right direction, so this way, and not a backslash like this. So when it points to the right, then it's a forward slash. And when it points backwards, then it's a backslash. So what does this look like when we add it to a HTML document? Well, here we've got our previous two paragraphs and right in between the two paragraphs, I've added a horizontal rule, which will hopefully help us divide the content to show that this part is not related to this part. And we've got some sort of separation in between. When we run this code or we view it in a web browser, this is what you would see. You would see the first paragraph, the second paragraph, and then you would see this horizontal rule or basically a horizontal line where the HR element would be in that document. Now, the horizontal rule is not the only void element. Another common one you'll see is the break element, and it looks like this. Now, similarly, again, we've got the name of the tag, and then we've got that forward slash, and then we basically end the tag. So there is no opening tag, there is no closing tag, there is only a single tag that looks like this, and the name of the tag goes right before the forward slash. Now, how does the break element work? Well, it's really useful when you have things where you need to separate things onto separate lines in order to have the correct meaning. For example, if you have poems, they are in fact meant to be in the same paragraph, but they should really each be on different lines in order to make the rhyming work or in order to make the structure of the poem correct. So this is a poem from one of my favorite poets, um, William Blake. And in order for it to work, we can't have it all run in one line, even if it's in the same paragraph. If we had this code right here, even though, yes, it is all in the same paragraph, it is all related to each other, and this does make sense, but you don't look at poetry like this. It doesn't really work. We don't know where we're supposed to breathe and how we're supposed to read out the poem. So instead, we can add our break elements that we just learned about our void element it doesn't have any content in it, but it just shows where the breaks in this paragraph has to go in order for this poem to look right. And when this HTML document is rendered, this is what you'll see, a perfect layout for a poem. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wallflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And it's all beautifully formatted thanks to each of our break elements at the end of each line. So now it's your turn to try an exercise using these void elements. So go ahead and download the um, starting files for this exercise from the course resources for this lesson. And when you've 
extracted it and opened it up, this is what you should see in the index.html. We've got the name of our poet, William Blake, and this is apparently his real address that he lived at at some point in life. And then we've got two paragraphs from Wikipedia, which briefly describes the poet. And I want you to use everything you've learned so far in order to format this HTML document so that it will look like the goal that I've got right here for you. As you can see, this top level, the name of our poet is gonna be rendered as an H1 because that is the most important thing about this particular web page. And then we've got the address of the poet, which is rendered as a paragraph, but notice that addresses, even though they are a single paragraph, they again need to be broken up into separate lines using our break element. And then finally, we've got a horizontal rule and that separates the address and the name of the author from the little bit of description of this author, which should sit in two separate paragraphs. Now I want you to pause the video and edit the index.html so you end up with this goal PNG when you preview this website instead of this jumbled block of text that we have at the moment. Pause the video now and give this challenge a go. All right, so hopefully you've given it a go and everything worked out. Um, I'm going to run through the solution. So first we said we were going to have an H1 for his name, and then we're going to have a paragraph tag that encloses the address. Now, in order to have that address on different lines, we're going to add our break element to the end of each line. And remember our break element is a self closing tag. So we're going to create it like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and simply copy and paste it to the end of each line. And you can see how nicely our address is now formatted. And finally, we wanted these two paragraphs um, at the end to be separated. So I'm going to go ahead and simply do that. And now we are pretty much golden. We've achieved our goal output. We've got our H1, our address separated. And the only thing we need to do is to add that horizontal rule between the address and the two paragraphs. Let's go ahead and add the other void element that we learned about. And now we've completed the challenge and you can check yourself against the solution to make sure that everything that you did looks exactly the same. Now, a neat trick I like to use is to simply copy the solution and go to diffchecker.com, paste in the solution code and then paste your code and then go ahead and click find difference. And it should highlight all the places that are different in case you've misspelled something or you've done something wrong. So for example, in this case, in our version, there is a space after the word Blake and the closing tag, which in terms of HTML will not make any difference. But had I instead maybe uh, written the H1 incorrectly and I didn't write the H for the closing tag, then you can see our output looks completely different and we're looking through all of this text. We don't know why it's happened. So we go ahead and copy it and then diff it to the solution. And it should highlight the fact that that is incorrect. And we should now be alerted to check the difference. That's one tip that I have for you today. And let me just go back to our index.html, fix this bug, and we should now be ready to go. Now, in terms of do's and don'ts with void elements, sometimes you see people doing is they add a break tag to add a new line instead of creating a separate paragraph element. Now, this is not what you want to do because this is not very good for accessibility, which means it'll make it harder for blind users with screen readers to understand the content on your website. So I recommend you always create new paragraph elements when you have new paragraphs and use the break element 
only when there is some sort of reason why you would want to separate the different lines in a single paragraph, but it still is a single paragraph, such as in the case of a poem or in the case of an address that we covered in this lesson. Now, the final thing to mention is that sometimes when you look at the horizontal rule element or the break element, you might see it represented without this final closing tag. You might see people simply write this, and this is perfectly valid HTML. So you could in fact have a horizontal rule that looks like this. You could have a break element that looks like this instead of the one with the forward slash at the end. And these are both valid options. You could go for this or you could go for this. As of HTML5, the latest version of HTML, what it's starting to do is it's starting to ignore this forward slash at the end. So it doesn't even look at it. It sees the first part and already knows that a break is a void element and a horizontal rule is a void element. So it doesn't actually need to keep reading. But I recommend to write your code with this end forward slash. And the reason is because when you read your code, you as the human, it will be much easier for you to see that this is a void element and it doesn't need a closing tag so that you don't end up being confused and you can identify the void elements and the non-void elements easily and distinguish them from each other. So that's just a quick tip and something to alert you to when you see it written like this on the internet. Both versions are valid. You can pick and choose, but I recommend going with this version.